Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. This is our last Friday for the month of February and we've been holding a contest uh, every week on character design uh, with Force, of course. Um, this last week we are doing a hockey team. So the request here was to uh, create three different hockey players. Um, and play with the concept of contrast and affinity. That's like one of the main things we're looking at today. Um, we're also gonna be looking at force. We wanna see that there's force within the characters that were designed. Uh, what's the creativity uh, level? Uh, you know, how clear is the work for each one of those um, elements, right? And out of that, we will pick a winner and the winner will get actually the grand prize for um for these contests today's like i said the last one we're handing out the biggest prize today um i have to say that swan lane Matunje and i are all uh quite pleased with the work that's come in over this past uh month and you guys putting in the effort and contributing um and also i want to just note i think and also having the courage to put work out there a lot of artists are very shy about like putting their work out there and having people look at it and giving them a critique you know and if there's any, there's no better way to learn than you actually just putting yourself out there. You know, you have to in order to really move ahead. So I just want to congratulate all of you over this last month, including today's contestants, um, on submitting your work. You know, I know that that can be a little scary. So hats off to you for for sending work in. Period. Um, two other things. Uh, again, if you like what we're doing on this channel, then please hit the subscribe button. If you hit the bell, then you'll get notified um, of what is happening that upcoming week. And it'll tell you, um, you know, when the video is going on. Uh, and that's it. So let's say hello to our instructors. Um, how's it going, guys? How you doing, Swenley? Ah, uh, doing well. You know, like you said, uh, it's exciting to see all the uh, all the uh, submissions and uh, I would say congrats to you guys for getting better over the weeks. You know, you see the the clarity and the the uh, level of the designs got better and better over these past months. So, yeah, it's uh, it's awesome to see. Yes, you've made our job harder and harder <laughs> every week. Yeah, that is very true. You know, even today it was like down to the last minute for us to go. All right, who is it? And we had to really like troubleshoot through all of it and go against our, you know, pertain it to our rules to figure out like who the winner is and why you know and we want to make sure we can really validate our decisions so how are you doing Martin Jay? yeah doing good they're really torn like destroyed and picking up the winners <laughs> that's yeah. good and this is one of the things that i want to bring is like uh it's this winner is winner but uh the thing is like see how much you have developed you know your skill so uh yeah that's really happy to see you know <laughs> Really mesmerized by it. Yeah, really good work. So as we know, the last two weeks, this has taken us like down to the wire. So let's get started and move through these. If your work is not in here, then it means it was either just too far off course in general. I know there's one or two students that submitted more than one um, submission. So I picked one submission. I thought one of the, you know, I picked the best one uh, to bring in here. Um, or you missed the you missed the deadline. There's a couple of people I think that may have submitted after the deadline of 11 p.m. Pacific Standard last night. Uh, then that then you didn't get in either, right? Just following the rules. All right. So um, to reiterate what we're looking for, right? At a high level, we really want this sense of clarity, right? Clarity across the assignment. Did you do the job? Are there three characters? Is there contrast and affinity? And to what degree did you do that, right? How creative were you? you know, in your um, assignment? How much skill did you represent, right? In order to fulfill the assignment? Is there function, right? Function has been something we've been bringing up all month. Like, does it make sense? Are there different functions of the different hockey players? Are they all doing the same thing? Or are they doing different jobs? Um, you know, how's their costuming working? If you added something, some of you did slightly different creative spins on those characters. Is that being represented or not? And to what degree, right? And are the drawings forceful? Let's not forget we're here, you know, on the Force YouTube channel. Um, are the designs forceful? You know, are they dynamic? Are they following the rules of force or not, right? All right, so let's get to it. Um, I'm gonna start with this one. This was uh, Valkix. Uh, 
pretty good. I have to say, uh, all three of us really enjoyed uh, this submission. I love this idea um, you wrote here about being obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons, which I, what, you know, I'm a very fond uh, advocate of as well. Uh, we had wizard, cleric, and barbarian. Um, uh, instead of me hogging this one, you want to take it, Swenley, and then I'll jump in. Ah, uh, sure. I must say, first of all, I love the dwarf. He's my favorite. The expression is just uh, hilarious. Uh, so contrast between the characters is great. You know, love the, the color as well, which unifies them. And um, the drawing is pretty good. You know, solid structure, uh, uh, pretty good shape design, you know, and with the emphasis on design, because I can really see that you took the time to really think about the shapes you know, and make sure like, it's almost like graphic design in a sense, what you did here. So uh, pretty good. I would say one thing that could be added is uh, the clarity of the of the functions. Like you wrote on the side that one is a, uh, one is the wizard, the other is a cleric. The, uh, I, I would say the barbarian is the clearest. Uh, the cleric one could, uh, could use more clarity. Like when I look at a character at first, uh, if you didn't write it, honestly, I wouldn't have known. So that could have used a bit more clarity. And in the same line of clarity, like the wizard, like the, the female has the, like the floating uh, ball in her hands, that should have been out, outside the silhouette so we can see it right away. So, um, yeah, so right, overall, again, pretty good piece. You know, just some minor adjustments here and there, maybe a bit more force in the poses. And uh, you've got uh, an even stronger design than what it already is. Yeah, I would agree with everything that Swanley just said. Um, I would, the only thing I would say is maybe the barbarian could have had like ripped off sleeves, right? Like maybe this would have been torn off to make them a little tougher, or maybe there would even be cuts in the, in the clothing to show that he's the one who's getting in there and actually doing the physical fighting. From a force standpoint, I'd say watch out for the arm here. This is very circular right here. You know, the apexes are almost exactly opposite um, each other. So it kind of kills the shape in the upper arm where the forearm is really good. And the rest of the shapes of the legs and the torso and everything is, is excellent as well. And the other main note is they're all wearing the same gear, meaning they're all just have the hockey stick, the sort of European like or field hockey stick. So, but there's no, so you'll see this in some of the other entries. Um, some of the other entries, what they did is they also gave different jobs to each one of the characters um, within the game of hockey. And I think that's this sort of missed opportunity here. It's like, hmm, who do you pick to be goalie, for instance? Would it have been the dwarf? That might've been really funny for him to, him to have these really high full like knee pads for how little he is. Or is it the barbarian? You know, he's just this huge, massive, super powerful uh, goalie or is it the you know is it the 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 wizard right is this something magical she could have done in being a goalie you know versus uh the other positions on the field right i love the i really love sort of controlled color i love that this is really like a black and white image with a spot you know red red spot color i really like that a lot i love that restriction in a sense i like the costuming like i said maybe more hockey maybe a little bit more force. Um, I like how you compose the three image. I, I like, you know, for those of you out there, I mean, I like this, like the shape that they all fit in. And I like that these two are boxed like this and you gave yourself this negative space for the arm to really fit in there. It, it like Swanley said, I, I think there's some aspect of being a character designer that means understanding like graphic design in a sense, you know? So a lot of good, a lot of good stuff going on here. And I think we really all enjoyed this one, you know? Anything you wanna add, Mutunjay? No, I think you guys uh, just covered up everything, like the main points. <clears throat> and okay. I just want to say, I uh, just like enjoyed it very much. You know, just like, you know, Mike said, you're really smart about the hair color here. I mean, uh, that uh, gray scale and then just like putting in one spot color and it just like spread across all the three characters very well. So we have hairs and we have the beard for the dwarf. And then you also mm -hmm. have the costume one uh, with all the three ones. So you're really smart, you know. And yeah. I like like the you know like the piece very much you know that would be and just like apply all the points that Mike and Swanley said and this would be and this has a lot of potential you know this piece has a lot of potential in it 
Yeah. Uh, so, and we were really torn off, you know, <laughs> while deciding. So yeah, it's, it's very good. Yeah. Okay, this was um, Axe Dandy. So I know you submitted a bunch of pieces. I picked this one uh, specifically, really because I thought it was your most creative more than anything. So I love this idea of almost these like Hawaiian guys. Um, I like the shaping. Um, it's really fun and humorous. Uh, to me, the main thing for you is just it's skill. You know, I think you just need to build up your skills so these ideas get presented with more and more clarity. Even if they're cartooned, it doesn't mean that you don't need, you know, good drawing skills to pull off the cartooning. Like one of the best cartoonists ever, right, is the guy who did Calvin and Hobbes. And I think he was one of the best draftsmen ever, you know, in that space. Uh, and even if it was, you know, um, Charlie Brown, right, like Charles Schultz could still really draw um, incredibly well. Having been to his his museum actually and seen other work of his, like he could really draw. Uh, so that would be my note. My main thing would just be, it's the skill piece. And I would say just keep working, you know, keep working on how to learn because you have no shortage of ideas, you know. Anything you guys want to add? It's pretty good. I mean, very funny. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, for example, this uh, middle guy, you know, uh, he could be a little bit more three quarter view, you know, just like the other two guys, because, you know, mm -hmm. you're getting a very good, uh, good symmetry here, but that just kills force, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, those kind of thing. And skill wise, you know, you just need like more skills, you know, and but this is a great concept. It's like, oh, Hawaiian guys and what kind of hockey they would play out like really uh, in I would be really interesting, you know, to know that. <laughs> that would be really fun. Yeah, it might have been a coconut, for instance, that they used as a ball, as an example, <laughs> right? Yeah. It'd been kind of funny. Maybe they could yeah. have had coconut helmets or something. There's other things maybe you could even add into this, but it's on the right track. Like I said, for you, it's all it's all about skill, you know. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, so this is no no sketching. I think Arno is here. Yeah. Um, so pretty good, right? Like I think it has. They have a lot of force. I love the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love the force costuming here. Like now we're all of a sudden starting a force hockey team, <laughs> all right? That means we have to gear up. Swanley, between Jay and I have to, we should have come in with costumes today of, <laughs> of hockey, force hockey. Uh, I love the color. You know, I love the use of um, contrast and affinity. I think my biggest note here would have been uh, more contrast. They're all humanish one guy's a little bigger the man and woman are pretty normal you know and relatively similar in scale uh there's no difference really in the costuming yeah not very much difference in the costuming i, I think that's a big one you know like the man and the woman are one the guy's a little different than the others but i can't tell if that means they have different positions or not or what those positions are within the function of the hockey team itself Right. But again, drawn well. I love the costumes that they have. I wish there was a little bit more there. Uh, relatively forceful, some good shape design. I think I want more on the function and more contrast from the players. You know, anything you guys want to add? Yeah, I would say what I like most about this one is there's something about the way you compose the characters that make them feel like a team. And even they gave me the impression that they are like close friends as well. So, uh, yeah, very, very good job on doing that. You know, and I would agree with Mike that a little more contrast, especially between the, uh, the male on the screen, right, and the female would have uh, made it like even uh, stronger remember contrast adds interest you know so the more contrast you can get in there the more interesting it becomes to look at yeah i think there's this interesting challenge within this challenge is it's like you can go either way like how much affinity do i want to create with only a little bit of contrast or how much contrast can i create with how little affinity right to hold them together um and that's tricky. You know, I think, I think most of you pushed more towards the affinity than the contrast, you know, and I think there's room. I think there's room to play with the contrast piece and still be able to hold things together, 
you know, and you already have the costuming. So that's probably the biggest affinity thing there is, right? And then you can even add change within the costume as to like different kinds of hockey costumes, right? Different roles and jobs within the team. Um, Cause you're always gonna get the affinity, you know, the affinity piece of it, you know? So it's good. And, you know, to Swanley's point, you could see that that is up here in that silhouette that the team, I think what's working is because the silhouette's all connected. It's one giant shape that it really makes them feel like a band, you know, working together as a, as a threesome like that, you know? Okay, anything you want to add, Matunje? Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Yeah, please. Uh, it's good, really good. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was fun. This is by Shakma. Uh, I really like uh, the idea of the contrast being the underwater, like sort of scuba, you know, headgear that they have, the like sort of deep diver headgear. Um, obviously, the affinity, the color. My main note here, I remember, was a functional one around. Uh, they're on skates and then this character's on wheels, even though the rest of them are on skates. So which is it, you know, like, are they on ice? Are they not on ice? Are they on the ground? It looks like they're on ice. They're using more like American style, uh, ice hockey, uh, equipment. So maybe this shouldn't have been wheels, but blades on something that looked like a wheelchair or some kind of other setup. This could have been like, a more of a tripod-esque kind of thing with two blades in the back and one in the front or vice versa, one in the back and two in the front. Maybe the back one's like a rudder or something, right? Um, I like the way it's drawn. I like the style too. I like the inking style. I like the simplicity of the painting style. It's almost what I would call like comic book meets animation kind of look and feel to it. Uh, I like that you wrote the DS, you know, on here. I'm trying to remember what DS stood for. My apologies. I know you had it written over here. Uh, maybe deep sea or something. Um, maybe a little more work in the logo, you know, instead of just it being handwritten like that. Um, I like that the body types are different. You have a lot of contrast there. You know, you have small, medium, and large. What throws this off a little bit is talking about small, medium, large. Is this character looks like the same size as this character because they're in different perspectives of one another and therefore the scale of the character on the left, it's hard to tell what it really is compared to the character in the middle, right? It's like, there's a lot of foreshortening all of a sudden. Uh, it looks like an adult figure who's upper body only. How does that compare to the kid? So I'd watch out for that as a presentation aspect, right? Um, Cause it's hard to judge them across, you know, against one another, right? Anything you guys wanna add? Like it. I uh, I enjoyed this one because it's like very graphic, you know, simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, looks like they're from underwater, like hockey team or something, you know, <laughs> because they're like wearing this like whatever, like big tank like structures, not tank like whatever the, the scuba structures. Yeah. Yep. But again, it's just like that uh, that guy with the wheels on that's creating confusion. Although it looks good on its own, but it just doesn't fit with the other. You know, two guys in here. Mm -hmm. So if they're on ice, well, he would be slipping all over, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the thing. Yeah. Anything for me, Swinley? Uh, yeah, I like the style as well. I think it's pretty cool. I would say what would maybe make it stronger is to present the characters in more of a three-quarter view. It feels a bit uh, flat, expand, uh, except for the guy leaning over. That one is okay. But I think Again, three quarter of you for presenting character designs is your best shot, you know, unless you're designing in like a flat style, you know, then you have to present it that way. But I think three quarter of you would have made these much more uh, informative, you know, to look at. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, on we go. We have Marla Bonar. Um, so it's kind of interesting, interesting to sort of piggyback off of the last idea with the lycanthrope, you know, and bring some of that over. I think what throws me a little bit is that two of the creatures are like lycanthrope-esque or anthropomorphic. Uh, and then we have the other character. Oh, I see. He's got, uh, I just noticed the crab claws, right? So he's got crab claws, but the human, more human face. So I don't know. That's a little funny to me. It means like they're not really all working under the same rules. I, me personally, I would have appreciated more affinity there in 
how human or animal are they? So that guy would have had a more like crab or lobster face, <laughs> all right? And maybe, and then the armored body uh, that you have. Um, I like that you're posing them out. You know, this is more force in the poses, some really good silhouetting across all three of them, actually. Silhouettes are pretty good, yeah. Uh, skill level, I'd say you just need to learn a little bit more in drawing. They're pretty good. There's a little bit of structural issues that need, that need some work in here. Um, but I think it's a pretty good stab. It is pretty creative. You have all three characters. They're all in motion. There's a lot of good stuff going on. I think it needs a little bit more construction, you know, work. Anything you guys want to add, Swenley? Yeah, I would say, first of all, this is a big step forward compared to last week. You know, Leo mm -hmm. really did uh, improve in, in terms of design here. And they're pretty forceful as well. And when you deal with the cantropes, one thing that needs to work is, uh, or needs special attention is the anatomy. You know, like the kangaroo, for example, the legs, and this is because I've studied them in the past that I immediately noticed that that needs a bit more work, you know, in order to like really work like kangaroo legs. Um, the other one's pretty good. No, I think the kangaroo is the one that uh, I would say, especially the legs, because the legs are so big on kangaroos, you know, from they hopping around. That needs to be a bit more, uh, that needs a bit more work. But um, yeah, good. Again, great. Uh, um how do you say that good progress compared to last week in terms of getting more creative and designing yeah it's cool uh anything with tim i would just say you know the thing that would dramatically improve this is referencing you know so let's say if you're designing this um crab guy you know uh, with claws and everything Take references first and see like how, let's say you can look for different species of crab or something like that and then try to like design it. So let's say the face looks very normal, but then he has like these crab uh, like uh, features everywhere, you know, even with the costume as well, you can see. And that's what's, again, it's creating a little bit of difference between all of these because this is a, this is a team, right? So they should be, I mean, wearing the same kind of clothes maybe. So referencing, I would say, uh, this is called mood board, by the way basically just collecting images and keeping them in front while you're designing things so you can like take uh they absorb things from that right so do that and this is the biggest mistake like people make they don't just reference it and they just think like maybe it's cheating but it's not right <laughs> so i would say maybe referencing would make it like really really good you know but i really like it you know it's like uh it's having this like very creative uh theme you know across going on so good you know good job <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, you know, Marla's writing in the um, in the chat there about the challenges you had, right, with, like, for instance, the legs. I think that that is the job, you know, so I'm, I'm happy that you're being this transparent. That is the job. It's like, how am I going to get this hockey player to be a crab, right, and work? Like, how far do I go crab? How far do I go human? There's a contrasted affinity kind of piece in there as well, right? And that goes for all of the animals. Right. Like how, you know, where is that balance between human and the animal that it actually has come from? Right. So I think you I think in the end, my sort of closing statement on this one is it it's not all solved enough yet. You know, there's more there's more work to do here. You're not finished. It's like the first pass of this. Like you probably have three or four more to go before you get to the, the real clever, creative solutions that make this finally work. Just needs more, you know, but you're on the right track, which is good. Okay, uh, this one is Julia's, right? App, lap lime, app lime art. Uh, lots of force. I think probably one of the strongest contenders when it comes to force itself. You know, good shapes, lots of movement and fluidity, lots of difference in the posing, right? They're all standing very differently, trying to show off their character through performance and acting. I would always, in something like a character design presentation, watch out for stuff that has too much foreshortening because uh, it's more, as, as boring as it may seem, we really do want to see a really good, clear silhouette. Uh, our first contestant did that well. We almost just wanted to push those poses a little more, uh, but you want to watch the depth thing. You know, I wouldn't get too crazy with that at this stage. 
Um, my biggest challenge here, I would say, is just the contrast in design. Uh, they're not really that different from one another. They're all very similar in size and scale, very normal and realistic. Uh, I would love to have seen a little bit more contrast. Um, and one thing I think that I like for the people that did do this is I really like seeing different jobs of the different players. So that's not here either. You also added this. I, I know you grabbed, you, you did a character page for each of them. I did bring one of them over. I really love this sketch that you did here. All the drawings that you did is peripheral design work for the characters is great. And I love the write-ups. Um, very good. You know, there's a lot of good, like this all on its own is kind of cool. Watch consistency too. I just noticed like, here's his leg and his leg. All of a sudden it's like two different legs. It's not his leg, right? Like which one is his leg, right? So in design, you really want to make sure like the whole thing is clarified and treated accordingly. You know, it's still that person's anatomy. It's a character you're making. We don't want a guy walking around on a very thin needle leg and then one that's more muscular, right? Anything you guys want to throw in here? Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's so cool. You know, it's, it's really, really cool. I mean, this piece really proves the point of, uh, it doesn't need to be, um, you know, like super clean, you know, to present your ideas. And at the same time, it's just got the color, but it's also got the, uh, the roughness in there. I mean, I'm not talking about roughness, but it, it is clear, like the ideas are very, very clear, you know, at just some place, uh, I, I would just say, maybe again, watch out for this arm, you know, and let's say for this guy, you could have, uh, the hand like this, right? So it creates this negative space in here uh, that would clear out the silhouette. Watch out for this hand as well, right? Which uh, just hiding behind that guy. Uh, but again, you know, just um, consistency all across to try to maintain that. But uh, I really love it. I really love it. You know, the, the dynamic lines, you know, that you have, <laughs> it's really good. I know how well you draw. So <laughs> it really shows up in here. Yeah. That's great. Really, really good. Yeah, that's something to be aware of. Go jumping off of Mertunje's last line, um, there's this fine balance between drawing really well and then becoming a designer. And most of you submitted drawings and the design aspect is really more in the creativity that you brought in, you know, you creatively like designed. Our first contestant with the, uh, the wizard and the barbarian, um, there's this thing about moving into the designing of shapes and the graphicness of things. I think that was one of the strongest that we, we will look at today with that headspace. So someone like Julia, you know, the challenge is to, your drawings are excellent. We all know about your work from drawingforce.com as a member there. Um, so the drawings are great. Uh, it's, can you start really turning the corner with force shape and start thinking about shapes and designs and proportions to add more variety and creativity to your work? And I think that that will be your next hurdle if character design is something you're interested in. Otherwise, you'd be also a great board artist, right? A storyboard artist, because you're very loose and forceful and fluid. And if that's the case, then we just got to make sure you learn composition. That will be the graphic design piece you need to learn, along with perspective and storytelling and so on, you know. But great work, you know. Skill, I think, really shows itself off here, right? Um, okay. Uh, this is Michael AJ. Do you want to add anything here, Swinley? Start this one off. Uh, yeah, I would say the, the contrast between the characters, it's there. You know, I, the main thing that I see is uh, that is needed is skill. You know, like we know you, you've been uh, with us uh, a while now. So we know that drawing wise, you can you can do better than this, you know. So I would say just a bit more work in the uh, uh, in the drawing themselves. Like, how do you draw to represent your ideas? You know, I think that would have made this uh, so much stronger because you have some funny ideas going on. Again, I like the contrast between the characters and the affinity is, is there as well. It's just a drawing that uh, needs a bit more work to do justice to the ideas that you have. How about you, Mertunjay? Because, uh, you know, we just want to focus on the characters. That crowd is uh, not what we require, right? But again, remember, we are uh, trying to design, not to do a concept painting or a sketch of this, like, characters, right? Uh, 
uh, things like, for example, in the middle character, you could have just removed the, the net thing, you know, so you can see the face of the character uh, more, you know? And um, yeah, I would say just again, watch for the silhouette and you know, those kind of things. Like some things are like re-tangenting, you know, across each other. So for example, um, here, you know, it's almost touching. Uh, if you can see my annotation here, see that one, you know, almost like touching each other, uh, tangenting in there. So I would just say, yeah, uh, first of all, just really focus on the character itself, you know. Uh, and yeah, with that crowd and everything, that could be added afterwards when we do like a concept or something. You know? So skill-wise, you know, just, uh, and we know, you know, you can draw really better than this one, right? I know it's tough, you know, we, we know it's really tough. So uh, thanks for the efforts, uh, you know, that we would say. But uh, keep massaging, keep massaging the idea of uh, this like clarity thing over and over and it will be great. No? <laughs> so I'm gonna disagree a little bit with Swanley and Matunje only in that I know we've been hounding you throughout the whole month, <laughs> right? Because we know you. And um, I think this is the best submission that you've sent in so far. So I can see that there's been an improvement. You're getting to a place where you're trying to use shapes a little bit more and you're trying to get clearer and cleaner in the designs. And I just want you to know I recognize that. Thinking back to your other, um, uh, your other submissions. I think you, along like I just mentioned to Julia, the trick is it's one thing to learn how to like draw and draw with force, but it's another thing to suddenly learn how to design with it. And it's not only the creative aspect. I think it's about the abstraction again of shape and understanding shapes, um, proportions to push forth your thinking, your creative ideas. You have a little bit of that going on. I really do like that you've got like a big muscular guy, you've got the little small guy and you've got the tall female. So that's good. A lot of good contrast going on there. I would say the, the muscle guy's got the heart with the lightning and it looks like it's on his shirt and on his arm. So I'm like, what's going on? Is it a tattoo or is it part of the clothing? Like I'm a little confused there. I don't know if it's a long sleeve shirt with a, I don't know, some kind of ring over the, over the deltoid there. Like, so that's, it's a little unclear to me. I think the that's challenge, is, excuse me. Uh, with that muscular guy you're talking about. And, uh, yeah. I, I think he's doing this, you know, for, for some reason, he's kind of doing this, but he should have done something like this, you know, okay, if you mm -hmm. can see on the camera. You know? I think he's so, doing what you're doing, but he's doing it across the front of the body. Right. He, he's doing something like yeah. this. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, clearer definitely would have been out, you know, as Matunji's point, yeah, much clearer um, silhouette. Yeah. I think that the challenge is you know how to draw from reference. And all of a sudden, you're not using reference here, right? It's not like you went out and searched for models doing these poses and drew the models and then dressed them in hockey gear. Instead, you tried to come up with these characters. And maybe that's not the way to go right now. Maybe you would have had to have done the work at the stage that you're at and found models and maybe tried to push them a little bit, but had a reference point to really inform you because you know how to decipher reality with all the stuff we've trained you to do. But I think the next step is, again, you're a great example of um, the obligation of the photography versus the inspiration of it and being able to cross that bridge. And that's a, that's a chasm that's bigger for some people and smaller for others, but that's the chasm that you need to get across, you know, is using the skills that you learned in drawing and starting to leverage them in drawing from imagination. You're having to create the model here. So think about all the work it takes to do that, all the force, form, and shape design, perspective, structure, anatomy, all that stuff to bring your skill level from reference over to drawing out of your head, you know? So, uh, yeah, I love that you submitted, you know, hats off to also your persistence and courage of submitting every week and listening to us harp on you <laughs> every week, right? Uh, and keep going, you know, and as you're submitting work for uh, the premium workshops on drawingforce.com or for your private submission, um, send in character work along with the figure drawing work so we can keep working on this. And I, and remind me when you send work in that I'll try to teach you on how to start crossing that bridge and you know, how to get you away from obligation into inspiration. Okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, let's see. Next up is Chow Wing. Atum Pale, 
Shao Wing got two Pale art, right? You want to start this one, Swinley? Yeah, I would say aesthetic wise, this one's really cool. I like the like the simplicity of the of the styles. You know, it's funny because if I would see like the the little guy on his own, I would have thought that he's the biggest one. You know, because of his proportion. So I think it's fun that you play around with that. I would say since you only did line work, which is totally fine, I would have got rid of the gray background because it makes it a bit harder to read. You know, either that or you should have filled in the silhouette of the characters with a lighter gray so that they pop out. Now they kind of like disappear. You know, if you look at a thumbnail, uh, for example, in, in Photoshop, you can barely see what's going on. You know, so that's something that you want to avoid when presenting uh, the characters. But again, aesthetic wise, I really like this one, like cool shapes, uh, quite dynamic. I would say maybe the contrast between the two tall guys could have been pushed uh slightly more and i i speaking specifically about the heights of them like one is a bit more muscular and the other one is more slender built which is fine i would have just pushed the height contrast a bit more and i brought I this in too by the way like he did pages for each character so i grabbed this one this was one of my favorites oh yeah yeah again very cool like clear shapes you know good form within those shapes which isn't something uh it requires a lot of skill to pull that off so yeah, cool aesthetic, uh, most definitely. You have anything more, Tunjay? Maybe just function wise, there are like some things. So for example, in the first uh, image, he got like those circle, like ovals behind the the feet in there. Mm -hmm. So you know how that works. You know if uh, you're thinking about some ideas, like how that circle actually works. Um, you know, that would be great, but, but right now, again, and silhouette wise, it's like very confusing. So, for example, uh, the leg of let's say this character here is like crossing this guy's, and then again, you got the oval here. So, in silhouette, it's like all gone, you know. So, there's like no negative space between like this character, which would uh, again create the confusion. So, uh, and again, I would agree with only like you should remove that gray background if you're not doing uh, anything else to it except the line. Uh, and that would uh, at least like make it a little bit more clear to understand, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say just uh, just do that, you know. But it's good, you know, it's good that, uh, and it, it, you know, you, you have guts to just send in the line work, which is great, you know, because you cannot like hide, you know, cannot hide behind rendering. So that's good. You know? I like it. Yeah, I would agree with everything both the guys said. Um skill really high i think you have super high skill level you know good drafting skill good force good shape design for those of you who have been talking about graphicness you know this artist understands that there's a design element to creating these character designs right they're they're shaped out and they're drawn but they're drawn shapes and those shapes convey form they convey force in this case they also convey the costuming I have to say, even though we didn't ask for this, I do think that tone at least helps here, if not color, because it's another tool of creating contrast and affinity. So if you'd brought in a little bit of tone on like the striping or some of the costuming that could have played into also like, what's the contrast to affinity piece here versus any of the other assignments that we've done. I think here it matters more because you have three characters that you're trying to balance this these rules out with, you know. But man, I would give you high high skill score. I think you definitely design well enough to work, you know, professionally skill wise. You just purely your drafting skill standpoint. So really good stuff. And maybe you already are. I, I didn't check out your account. Maybe you already are, but you definitely have the ability to do that. Um, and then. I'm not going to repeat what they said, but I would say I agree with all the other comments that were that were said. But excellent work, you know, really, really good. All right, this is Yain um, Injin Scene. Um, I really like this one. My main note, I think, if anything, would be force. All right, it's still a force challenge, no matter what. So when you do a robot, you kind of run the risk of getting less force out of the design because it's more angular so you got to be really clever about how you how you convey it you know 
other than that, I think it's really, it's really quite cool. It's almost like the guys from, from the matrix, right. Or a lot of anime stuff where there's a body, you know, a human inside and, um, sort of, uh, endo ex exoskeleton, I should say, um, you know, robot. Um, yeah, I like the numbering. I think that's really cool. The logo, the way the body fits in there. There's a lot of function. You score high marks on function. You know, it's like trying to make this thing like it's actually starting to work and some of the guts of it's there, how the body fits in there. There's a lot of thinking. I just noticed the different heads is really cool. So you got contrast in the heads, you got facial expressions in there. Maybe I would have liked to have seen, again, different jobs. They're all wearing the same gear. I think that might've helped. Maybe the robot shapes are a little different from one another to represent the different jobs. Imagine it's like, what is the goalie robot? Maybe the goalie robot's got four arms instead of two as an example, right? Like that might've been cool. Um, yeah, anything you guys wanna add? Yeah, I would say uh, idea is pretty cool indeed. I really like uh, the creativity that you brought. Uh, I would say uh, on a big picture sense, contrast, more contrast would have helped because when I first saw your submission on Instagram, I honestly first thought it was the same character in three different poses. You know, that was my first read. And then I saw the numbers and then I was like, oh, so then it's three different characters. And then I saw the heads. So even though in the details is there, you have to remember that we read big to small. So you want the first impression to be clear, like bang, three different characters. So that is the one thing I would say to pay attention to. But in terms of creativity, this one is awesome. Yeah, I would say creativity and function. I wish I had more force and more contrast, you know. Anything you want to add, Matunje, before you move? No, oh, really like it. I agree to both of you. You know, just uh, I was also thinking about the same thing. It's like, oh, this is the same, is this the same character, you know. <laughs> So individuality is something that you know you can work on. Uh, I really like uh, because you know I I use I do some mix and I know like how tough it is like to turn turn it around. So I'll give you points for that maybe you know because you're just like shown two other uh, like you're shown two angles. But again, it's uh, just that uh, individuality is like what's killing you know your design a little bit. Uh, but very creative, you know, very very creative. Thanks for submitting. All right, we got to bump up the speed a little bit. We only have 15 minutes left and still quite a few to look towards. Um, we got Oswald here. Forward nine, Sklanky, refuses to use his hands in game. He has success thanks to his overdeveloped mandibles and muscles. <laughs> so you got different jobs here. Oh, here's a forearm guy, you know, four arms, right? Blood is invincible. Nobody will build a custom stick for his size and nearly out of patience. <laughs> the goalie. Yeah, so hats off, Oswald, for the four-armed goalie, right? There's a functional piece we're talking about. Um, so pretty good, drawn relatively well, clear setup. You know, they're all on a line where we can see them. Um, I love the descriptions here and the challenges that you're defining based on the character designs. Guy on the left and right, normally I'd say, oh, well, they're kind of the same, but you added the four arms instead of the two. They're all holding the sticks in very different ways. Uh, the costuming is pretty good. All in all, it's pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything really here for me. Maybe a little bit more dynamism in the poses, but you do have some, you know, some decent acting going on as to how they all, who they are. And I like that the costuming is slightly different. This guy doesn't have it on his arms versus this guy does. And this guy's got the gear. And most of the shapes are pretty good also. Yeah, anything you wanna add, Swanley? Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, very clever ideas, you know, the contrast is there. Yeah, I kept, keep, kept looking at this one and see like, there's something that I feel that needs to be added in order for like, the designs to be done more justice, you know. I think it's in the in the posing, maybe a bit more contrast and dynamism, like Mike mentioned. Like the guy at the screen right, I would say, uh, well, maybe it's because they're all like standing like 
relatively straight, you know, so if you can add a bit more contrast and dynamism in the posing, I think this would uh, make the designs uh, come across a bit more stronger and more interesting even. Anything you want to add, Martin Jay? That's good. I agree to both of you guys. Uh, I mean, you covered every every point in here. Okay. So good job. This is what area, what are you doing, right? So here, talking about posing, we have lots of posing going on. Um, playful, manipulative, manipulative, strategist. I like the way you got playful with the fluidity. He's in a strength position. He's defender, team player, agile perfectionist. So really fun. There's a lot of variety in the posing here. The costuming is good unity. To really cut to the chase, um, you have a lot going on here intellectually. Um, the skill needs to be better, you know, because you're trying to get yourself down to simplicity of sort of a cleaned up, almost animation style design. Uh, it needs better form in it, just still more structure, you know, more construction in the bodies and in the faces. In fact, like the main guy, uh, Matt, I can't feel the turning edge in his face to really understand the anatomy of it. Like his jaw goes all the way back to the side of his head. So his ears really not in the middle of his head, it's at the back of his head. It needs more of the box like construction in there. And there's a lot of that kind of little stuff. The hands, um, you can see the hand on Matt that's up top is the same almost as the one holding the stick. You know, the, the knuckles don't have a, like a structure change from the, you can see in my camera here from the top of the hand to the knuckle and then down the box of the front of the fingers, right? So there's two planes there and that's not in here. So I have a feeling your, your main challenge is to get more perspective and structure, especially into anatomy. Because everything else is working pretty well. You probably are just getting to shape too fast. But, you know, I appreciate that you went after that for this challenge, you know, that you're trying to come up with design, you know, and, and it seems like you kind of get that. You just need a little bit more of the academia, you know? All right, I'm gonna move on guys, just for the sake of time, okay? If you have something you're like, I gotta say this, then feel free to stop me. Uh, this is Marco. Um, I'd say the biggest thing I like here is the force of it, like the skill of the drawing and the force of it. I like these like fast poses. Uh, they're fluid. I like the drawing style. Um, the guy in the middle, the silhouette's really hard to read because we miss an entire leg. You know, there's just too much foreshortening. Um, I wish there was, it just needs more. You need more work here, like more in the costuming, more of the team like logo and stuff in here. Um, I'd like to see different jobs across them, right? The functional part of the hockey team uh, aspect of it. And you draw well, it's pushing the drawing again into design a little bit more, you know? Um, I like the mustaches. I've just noticed that there's an affinity here with all the mustaches. It's like, you have to have a mustache to be on this team, you know? So that's kind of fun too. I think it just needs more, it needs more work, more design work, more team work, no pun intended, but more of showing the team you know, aspect of things and be aware of silhouette and stuff like that, you know, but definitely one of the most forceful um, submissions, I would say lots of great movement in the drawings, you know, and I like all the, I like the style that you were getting yourself in here, you know, anything you guys want to add? Yeah, I would say indeed it's very dynamic. Uh, and in light of that, I think the hockey sticks look a bit flat compared to the characters, like, the perspective is so extreme, so those hockey sticks should be getting bigger and uh, have a much more volume to them and coming right into our faces. And I think that would make uh, the type of posing that you're doing it even more clearer. Mm -hmm. For the leg, you know, the, the right character, it's like coming into three, four, then suddenly got this profile shot and the feet, you know? So these are like you know, some little things here and there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I really like the mustache idea. I, I agree to my guess. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, who knows? That might have been something to do with the title of the team as well. You know, could have been really funny. Right. Okay. This is Alan. 
So let's see, you wrote a bunch of stuff here. This is your last entry. Decide to go for an ice hockey team. Similarities are their costumes and the character designs. Bill, Buck, and Beavis. Different physiques and personalities. So this is an excellent example of what we've been talking about when it comes to like design. We've got the little stout guy, huge, big block guy, and this very skinny little guy. So this is really thinking about design and yet he's drawing, but the design is there. And you know, you can see proportional change in the thinking the costuming is similar. Um, Let's see, you wrote here, I place the environment setting of the court to contextualize better the relation of scale. That's cool. Of them relative to the boards and to um, the net. It seems like perhaps you're even a hockey fan, you know, to add in this other stuff. It feels like there's some information there. I would add, my main note would be, which I think I've mentioned before, is man, you have so much stuff going on for you. You just need to learn how to draw better, you know? Like, God, the thinking here is great. The designing here is great. I just wish the drawing was better, better form, better force uh, within the use of how you're learning how to design and your creativity. I love how there's a, such a strong change up across your three uh, characters. So much going on there. You just need to get more skill going, you know? Anything you guys want to add before we move on? That's good. I think. I mean, yeah, I think it's, now it's good. I think the, the the drawing can use a bit more work, but the design is uh, is pretty fun. You know, it's there. So yeah, just work on your drawing skills, and you're uh, you'll be awesome pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know I'm going to butcher your name because we've gone back and forth on this, but I think it's Giles and Gile. So kind of clever, um, not only are you jumping off the launch point of the Lacanthrope, um, we come over here and we have these three anthropomorphic characters with very unique posing, uh, drawn well. Uh, the design of them is different in their shapes. I think the design could be pushed a little further. I think you're still a little bit in the headspace of drawing versus design but creative, you know, I like that they're all wearing the costuming in different ways. That's, that's one of the things that most of you missed in this, um, uh, this contest uh, for this week is when you give people the costume and it's the same, what does each individual character do with that costume? I kind of referred, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier with the Dungeons and Dragons submission about like, how do they wear it? Maybe the barbarian has the torn sleeves, right? So we've got the sort of, you know, belly of the bear sticking out. The Puma-esque character doesn't wear the shirt at all. Why? Well, because look at, look at his body, <laughs> right? He's like, hey, check out my abs, right? Um, and then, you know, the wolf character, of course, is more fully clothed, excellent pose. We can tell that the bear is the goalie because he's wearing more of the costuming in that space. And it's, it's drawn really well. And I think you added here, I grabbed the bear, I think. You did a close-up of the headshot of each one and did a little bit right up. You know, don't be fooled, his duty is first, right? And, you know, and named their positions. I think that's really cool too. That was kind of a rarity that came out of all of this. And I have to add, I have to say, we didn't make this part of the contest, but I do want to call out the professional quality of the presentation. You know, aside of the drawingforce.com logo, which is such a fun little added piece, but I like the cleverness of the shape behind the characters, you know, with the big circle over the goalie and extending the boxes out to the sides for the other two characters. That shape works really well with this three man setup. So there's a sense of graphic design here, not let's say even just the characters, but in how this is all put together, you know? Even the font, the font for some reason to, for me really works. I'm not sure where you grab the font, but from, but it feels sporty. It's also slightly feels italicized. So it feels like it's got a sense of speed like a hockey team would. It's very good. 
you know, really, really good. A lot of good stuff going on here, I have to say. Anything you guys want to add? I say we keep moving because we're almost out of time and we have a bunch of people actually still to go. And I have to finish on time, which is two minutes, supposedly. <laughs> so this is BB Ambrose. Um, pretty good. Uh, oh, I was just going to say there's only two, but here's the third. So great scale change, lots of variety there. Uh, jobs, hard to tell. I noticed that their sticks are all a little different, so that's cool. She's wearing a helmet, she's wearing a helmet. So a lot of variety and yet unity. And I think, yeah, and you added a pose here as to how they play. Yeah, playing styles. So that's cool. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, talking about affinity again, just adding some value. I mentioned this in an earlier submission. I think adding some value helps really show if the costuming is like working across one another, one another or not. You have a small write up here, the friend from school. Oh, that's cool. So you have a brother sister thing going on here and they brought in the dancer. Stick is from natural materials. They skate in a natural plane of smooth stone. Hmm. Oh, I like that. Light show with sparks. That's kind of fun. Cool. Pretty good. And I like that you added the idea of play styles. I guess I see these are the sparks now that we're seeing from the stone. Very good. Uh, Sahara, right? Galaxy full of alien life, intergalactic legacy, league of ice hockey and Europa, gloopy molecules, Proxima to Centauri. Wow, okay. Andromeda's furthest reach is selling pretty much best. I don't know. Okay, cool. So again, to cut to the chase, um, you did a lot of the stuff I've been asking for in here, which is costuming, clarity of jobs, different poses. The short of it is. Again, more skill. It needs just more drawing skill. There's a lot of good stuff that you're doing at a top level um, and you're very shapey. You need to get in there. And the main drawing thing that's missing, I would say, is force and uh, structure, more form. A lot more form needs to be needed here. Creativity wise, great. Some of the stuff here is really good, good posing. This head doesn't feel great to me. Hers isn't too bad. You know, that's drawn relatively well. Um, and I like the costuming. I think, like I said, it's in the drawing. He's a little stiff, even though he's on an angle, he's very much a straight line, you know, but a lot of good work going on there, which kind of leads to this one too. So Lazy Goblin, um, I really like the submission. I like the costume. I like the shaping. Uh, my main issue with this, and you did a bunch of pages, by the way, I want you to know, I did look at them. I grabbed this one because I know you had notes here about how this all works, right? They get to fly on these kind of uh, hockey witch broomy things, right? Focus on their mana in the broomstick and later on the ball. Uh, my main note would be the characters are not very forceful, right? So we can't ignore that, you know? They're very shaped and everything, but there's not a lot of movement and fluidity in the shape design. They're kind of stiffish, you know? So, my note, my main note to you would be just to get more force, you know, force and fluidity and rhythm, you know, into your work. Uh, Cause you have a lot of great other stuff going on, you know. Again, with Tunjay and Swenley, if you want to add anything to any one of them, just jump in. I'm just trying to get us to the finish line here. We got Jason, uh, in Northern Logging Town of Sheldrake. Everything shuts down to cheer the local. Um, I like that you tried pushing it to shape I think it loses a little bit of your drawing skill in there to show up here in the shaping. It's pretty good. I like that you called this out. This is very much like the marketing aspect thing. It's like, here's the colors of the brand and the costuming. Uh, I love that he broke his stick. That's fun. You do have different, um, different gear is great, right? Thumbs up on that. I like the presentation too. It's like you got clever about the perspective, but kept them all in it. Uh, so they all read in the same space. Yeah, a lot of good stuff going on. And I think you added, yeah, you had sheets on the characters as well. That's kind of cool. The prodigy. The origin of the stick. No one can touch it. See, hockey is his own ticket out of town. Cool. I like the head drawing a lot. 
And I like these sheets that you did. I thought they were really, I thought they were really good. I love this little move that you showed. That's, that's awesome. That little added extra piece of information. It's really, really great. This is uh, Kabi. Create an account so you could post hockey puck girls inspired by Powerpuff Girls, magical girl hockey oriented, action oriented, why they wear the armor, fun. I love that you showed a difference in jobs, um, difference in sticks and gear. Um, I think the main thing again is just a little bit more drawing skill here. Uh, notice the leg here on this girl going into the boot, she would break her ankle, right? Like above the ankle into the leg, right? This one gets a little, in the roundness of this one, we start losing a little bit of the form. So tricky to make sure you go round, but keep the form going at the same time. Um, I wish the costuming had more unity. They're all almost, there's almost too much contrast. It's like the first time I'm actually saying that, but I think there's a little too much contrast. Like she, it feels like she has no costume. All right, she's skating around in a dress. And the team part of the hockey is very important, right? Okay, well, here we are, we're almost at the end. So here's our top three that the three of us went through. We go all the way back to the beginning with Val Kicks, excellent submission. We've got Julia's group. And we have uh, Gilles's, um anthro anthropomorphic uh, team. And uh, with a little drum roll, um, our winner for the final uh, contest is Gilles, right? Uh, I have to tell you guys, it was a really tough call. The other contestants were very close seconds. We finally picked this because um, not only does it have force, that's actually pretty darn important, um, but a really nice balance of the contrast and affinity piece. I love that the costuming really feels like it pertains to every character. Each one of them is wearing it very differently. Um, and it's showing off their personalities in very unique ways. You got the cocky athlete, the kind of goofy bear with the belly sticking out and the little more sinister uh, wolf and that their poses are showing that as well. I love that you put in the gear, the gear is different. You have to, you know, again, the clothes are the same and that they personalize that and it's drawn really well. Presentation was great, just extra points for presentation. Um, I think the only suggestion the three of us have for you is to keep pushing the border a little bit from being able to draw this well and come up with so many creative ideas and designing like the clothing and such to also pushing design from proportion and shape even further, right? To take that even further. There's a little bit of the similarity here in their overall humanoid shapes. You might've had maybe a creature in here like a, uh, um, like an aardvark or a, a hedgehog or something as like a small fatter, you know, character. Um, but other than that, um, just amazing, an amazing skill, right? The skill is definitely here as well. So what does Gilas win? So what you win is um, a free force bundle. So that's force, form, shape, and anatomy, lifetime access. So you will forever have access to these um, courses to keep helping you along the way with you learning how to draw with force. So congratulations. Uh, great job. Thank you, everyone, for submitting your work this past month. Um, next week, we will go back to our normal programming, <laughs> right? So we'll have some special topic, something to talk about that deals with force. So please come on by again um, next week. Uh, also, to close, if you, um, like I said, are enjoying the channel, then please subscribe and then hit the bell so you get notified. Thank you, Swanley and Matunje, um, for all of your insight this month. Sorry, I had to rush here at the end of today. Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, maybe this is something we don't even wait for February to do, or maybe every few months we do like a contest, like just a one week contest or something. Really enjoyed um, doing this with you guys. And I love being able to give you guys um, some prizes, you know, from the website and uh, hopefully inspire you with learning how to draw with force. Which, by the way, if anyone here is from Japan, I just got an email this morning from my publisher that the 10th anniversary edition has now been translated into Japanese. So if you speak Japanese, go get the 10th anniversary edition of the book and uh, we will all see you next week. All right. So thank you, Swanley Mutunje. Thank you everyone for joining and we'll see you in seven days. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye guys. See you guys. Bye. See ya.